Welcome back. Taiwan remains a hot button issue between the United States and China. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping met for three hours during the G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia, to discuss this, among other topics. Xi said during that meeting with President Biden that Taiwan is at the core of China's interests and that it is the first red line that must not be crossed. Now, Beijing considers Taiwan part of its territory and the island should have no right to conduct foreign relationships. But we saw House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visit Taiwan this year, the first visit from a high-ranking U.S. official in 25 years, despite warnings from Chinese officials. Newsmax senior correspondent John Huddy joins us now from Taipei with more on Taiwan's perspective about that G20 summit uh, that has come and gone. He joins us now in Taiwan. John? I'm standing here in the night market in Taipei, Taiwan, in the central part of the city. Earlier today, we were in Liberty Square and watched a poignant moment during the flag raising ceremony as the flag, the Taiwanese flag, was raised over the square. Several people stood at attention, saluting as the Taiwanese national anthem was played as the sun also rose over Taiwan. I traveled here after covering the G20 summit where President Biden met with Chinese President Xi Jinping. After that meeting, President Biden said he believed that a Chinese invasion of Taiwan was not imminent. And that seems to be a feeling shared on the ground here among various officials that I've talked to over the last couple days, including Ai Shung Lai, the head of the Prospect Foundation, a think tank here in Taipei that works closely on national defense issues with the government. He said it's not within China's interest right now to invade Taiwan, nor, he said, is China ready. In addition to the Chinese uh, military hardware, uh, there are uh, to, to have a successful invasion against Taiwan that requires a lot of other capabilities, and many of them the China right now does not possess, uh, such as airlift and the capable sea lift capabilities, uh, and uh, the uh, the military geography uh, across the Taiwan Strait is also very complicated. What what type of weapons does Taiwan have? Right now we're talking about the uh, what Weaponry that is uh, highly lethal, uh, but uh, numerous, mobile, dispersible, so that it will be uh, it will be very difficult for China to take them out in the first uh, few days uh, and uh, concentrate uh, strikes. Are people sure here that the United States would indeed defend Taiwan if China invaded? I think the understanding here is that uh, uh, should China have an unprovoked attack against Taiwan, uh, the United States definitely will respond. And for our military planners, uh, their uh, whole operation uh, assumption is still that we had to defend on our own. Earlier today, we also went to the port city of Keelung. It's really in the northernmost point of Taiwan where there's a naval base, and we saw several Taiwanese naval vessels that were docked there, including a guided missile cruiser. Now, Taiwan does have a strong military. It's got modern aircraft. It's got a naval defense system. It's got weaponry from the United States. HIMARS, the high mobility artillery rocket systems, javelins, uh, stingers, also tanks. However, it really is no match for China's massive military. But that said, China is not willing to get into a war. This would be a bloody, nasty battle, as Taiwan definitely has the military capabilities to deter and repel a Chinese invasion, not to mention engaging in conflict with the United States. Also, China is an economic superpower. It's one of the leading manufacturers of semiconductors and microchips and has trade relations not only with the United States but China. So a war with Taiwan is a war that China and the United States certainly do not want. Back to you. All right. Thanks to John Huddy for us in Taiwan. Let's welcome in now Brigadier General Blaine Holt. He joins us now. General, great to have you back with us. Great to be with you. All right. Let's talk about uh, the kind of what we've seen so far, if anything, what you've been able to pick up on in the wake of this visit between President Biden and President Xi uh, in Bali. Biden has repeatedly indicated um, that he would back Taiwan should there be any kind of invasion there. Uh, do you think this was discussed and how in, in how much detail was this part of President Biden's previous rhetoric discussed? Yeah, so I'm sure that the topic has come up. I know that uh, the Chinese are really upset about anything that we say on the public stage about Taiwan or whether you're, we're saying, oh, it doesn't look like there's an invasion imminent or we would defend Taiwan. Um, it seems to me that we had a better policy going uh, with strategic ambiguity where nobody needed to really understand 
I mean, we have clear understandings in diplomatic channels. The Chinese want to save face at every step. I'm all for doing these things if there's a strategic end. So we talked about that um, on this show, about the Pelosi visit, and that's fine, but what do we get for it? And what we see here is that the president probably took up a lot of that time addressing climate change goals, military to military contacts, really doesn't project strength. And if we want to project strength in Asia, which I believe we should, we should probably start investing in our Navy. That would make sense. Uh, what you know, not that you were in the military for a long period of time. Not that you would know more than I would, of course. But uh, it does make sense. And let's also talk about uh, what Sweden's talking about when it comes to the Nord Stream pipeline. They say uh, gross sabotage is likely the cause of this. Uh, also, this parallel underseas pipeline runs from Russia to Germany. We talked a lot about this, and there was some blame that the United States may have been involved here. But what are you hearing? Uh, in terms of the latest information we're getting about the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline? So um, from my own sources, I have heard um, just about every answer you could possibly get on the planet. Um, thank goodness I don't have a security clearance. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but what I will tell you is, is that it's alarming to me that we have three countries um, in Europe, Germany, Denmark, and Sweden, all have conducted their own investigations and all have announced that they've come to some sort of conclusion about who did it, how it was done, um, and they won't release that information. Well, that indicate if, if it wasn't Russia, then why wouldn't they release the information? So uh, it's troubling to me that for their own national security reasons, we're not allowed to know. I think we should know, and I think yeah. we should get that out there because if the Russians know, they're going to get there with and present their evidence, and then we'll wonder why we're not unified in Europe and talking to each other. Let's also talk about uh, North Korea. Japanese officials say the North Koreans have fired a ballistic missile. However, in today's launch, it's an intercontinental ballistic missile, missile an ICBM, and could potentially, this one they launch, reach the U.S. mainland. How concerned should we be about this? We need to be very concerned about this. The, uh, the Northern Koreans have definitely changed their level of aggression. Uh, their statements on the world stage, they are testing all these missiles, they're getting, the missiles are doing well uh, technologically. And, you know, Kim Jong-un is definitely threatening and wants to have uh, more of a regional uh, uh, presence. And he's trying to block out the United States and diminish the South Korean-United States alliance. It's very dangerous. And again, we talk about miscalculation. Uh, uh, you know, if one of those missiles hits South Korea, we're we're going to have a real problem. And he's been firing them very close. It is a tinderbox, isn't it, in Asia right now? General Blaine Hall, great to see you. And of course, uh, you and I will be probably doing the same thing tomorrow at 3:30 Eastern time, watching our Georgia beat Bulldogs. Those yeah, beat those kitties. We're going to kill those kitties. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the Kentucky Wildcats, by the way. We're not. We're not. No actual cats will be harmed tomorrow by General Hall nine. <laughs> Just great. Wildcats. Just, just Kentucky Wildcats. Just Kentucky Wildcats. <laughs> Go dogs. Great to see you, General Holt. Take care. Go dogs. Great weekend. No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Tell me don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.